Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Titans, as well as the latest episode of Van Helsing. Like always, if I'm talking about something that you want to listen to, you can always look in the description down below, a clue to tell me to start talking about each of the respective shows. So, for example, if you don't want to hear what I say about this week's episode of Titans, you can skip to what I say about this week's episode of Van Helsing. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is this week's episode of Titans. A great episode. We finally dive back into understanding this whole Jericho, uh, Dick slash the Titans slash Slade situation. So we kind of get a lot of interesting backstory and learn. Because I was wondering why, like Jericho's situation of like you know communicating with sign language, but it turns out it was an you know. Basically, we kind of go all the way back. We see like the exp- a little bit into the experiments that made Slade into the super soldier that he is. And because it, it, it turns out well, there's so many things that kind of break down. Well, first and foremost, he came back home and it seems like he wasn't always there in uh, Jericho's life. But the fact of the matter is, it's like, I'm sorry I missed your birthday. It is important. You know, it isn't like it's not a thing of like, no, it's not uh, no big. It's like it is important. The fact is, I missed it means a lot. So it's like he's trying to make it up to his son, basically saying, I, I'm going to be there more prominently in your life. But obviously that didn't last long because Slade went from in the military. After he left the military, he went into the more privatized sector. Obviously, like he makes his son believe that it's, I forgot what the lie it was that like him and his wife came up with about what it is he actually does. But obviously we know he's you know a contract killer, an assassin. But um, it seems like that work found following him back home because it's an incident that led to people kidnapping his son and wife and holding them hostage. And the situation ended with like Jericho getting his throat cut. That's why he can't talk. Um, I was actually kind of surprised later on when we find out he's a pa- he has powers. I almost thought his abilities were going to be related to the fact like his because that's what I thought initially. I thought like it was kind of I thought maybe on some level it might be like a black bolt black bolt slash. I know that's Marvel comparison, but regardless, I guess if we want to make a DC comparison, I kind of thought it might be kind of borderlining some Black Canary level type of thing of like, you know, her her um, her uh, Canary cry. I thought it was going to be something possibly similar to that, but it turns out not to be the case at all. I was actually kind of surprised to see that Jericho had powers in general. That was kind of interesting. Um, it kind of makes me rethink the whole Rose situation. Like Rose, like either Rose is BSing that entire story or she is his actual daughter. Because that's why I'm confused. Because like, because I can't remember in Arrow if that character was actually Slade's daughter. I don't think it was. I'm pretty sure that was his, um, I think that was some lady that just followed him. So that's why I'm wondering about Rose. Is Ro- Because like in the flashbacks, you never saw Rose hitting her hair. Maybe there might have been a little background things, but I feel like she would have come up. But also at the same time, part of me is thinking like she might have had, she might, has a, might have a different mom than Jericho. I, I don't know if she's older or younger than Jericho. She might be younger. Either way. Maybe she, like I said, she probably has a different mom. Maybe, I don't know, maybe maybe Rose is from the first fam- family and Jericho's from the second family. He started, I, I have no idea. Maybe we'll kind of dive into that uh, later. But it's just interesting because Jericho has the abilities he does, but Rose's abilities match more of um, Slade's. Because I was also wondering about that. I was like, why is it that he has the powers he does? Which, I mean, I've talked about it, but I, it's a pretty neat ability of, like, when he locks eyes with people, he can take his consciousness and make it take over someone else's body. Obviously, his body's mob- immobile uh, during that situation. He's kind of almost like his eyes kind of glaze over and he's not, he just stands still. Um, it was pretty badass. I loved it when he took possession of Hank and started making Hank dance and stuff like that and talk about, yeah, I'm going to be kind of miss being in his body. Plus, he lifts up um, Hank's shirt to show off the abs. He's like, yeah, I'm going to miss this too. So I just, I love that he was kind of having fun like that. But uh, the point I was making was like, because, you know, it's just, I was wondering, I was like, oh, so is he a metahuman? So I was like, okay, because I was curious, like, how metahumans typically are made in, like, the DC comics. We know how they came about in Flash and Black Lightning the TV show. So I'm curious, like, was it going to be, like, because it's just kind of like, and most stuff, it just seems like, oh, metahumans are just a thing. I don't, you know, I don't know if they go into the nuance of, like, how they came to be type of, you know, maybe in certain circumstances. Like I said, I'm unfamiliar with the comic books. But regardless, once again, going through it on another tangent. But I thought it was kind of... You know, interesting that they are like it's like Jericho has such a unique ability, yet Rose's reflects Slade. So I'm assuming she went through the same experiments, not unless it is a genetic thing, because of the experiments it turned Jericho and gave him the abilities. He's had much like Rose. So 
Like I said, I was kind of thinking it was BS, but now I'm sitting here talking about it. It could just be that she is from a different family, you know? So, who knows? It is that thing of, like, even though they're all set on the revenge, everyone kind of has different approaches to it in the sense of, like, Dawn is kind of one of the first people to be like, yeah, I'm not okay with this. Because it's like we've actually got to know Jericho now. He's actually a pretty cool kid, so it's like they feel bad using him. But at the same time, it's like this is a means to end to get to slay, but it's like he doesn't know much about, you know, because he didn't know anything about his dad's work, but because, you know, that was all kind of kept a secret from him until later on when they revealed it. But, you know, eventually got to the point, because obviously it led to, like, winter growth, Green, but by the time they caught up to winter green he had already i guess he'd already kept it i guess because of the, one of the titans getting killed they probably already set their sights to be like well let's keep a, an eye on the titans and see what they're doing and i guess winter green saw them coming so he ended up bolting but it's just kind of interesting that he ended up leaving that soon in advance so i'm like huh I mean, he had photos of them at his place and everything so i guess he must have been tracking their movements and stuff like that but regardless you have like Don and Hank being the first ones to be like, yeah, let's back away using this kid. Let's find some other means. You could tell Dick was kind of on the fence in a sense of like, you could tell he kind of, he was basically saying like, yeah, let's just kind of forget about this. We'll kind of find another way because he didn't want to keep using Jericho because he was a pretty dope kid. But then like you have, you know, Donna, who is the most, you know, affected by this because she lost Garth. It's like. You know, it's that sad situation of so much time. Not only is he already gone, but it's also like so much time wasted. You know, she had her reasons for not starting a relationship with him. And now it's like you never you when you're ready for it, like you never get that chance. So you kind of have to, you know, take life by the horns while you have the opportunity. It's kind of like the sad lesson from this situation. But Don is the one that's like, no, did you forget about what he did to Garth? But it's like, no, none of us have forgotten. We'll never forget. But we have to go about this situation a different way. We can't be using this kid like this. So... She was kind of the most driven by. It's also interesting, too, because I was curious. I was like, yeah, I had a feeling like Garth wasn't the initial target. That's why I was thinking it was Donna. But then I was like, is it actually all the Titans? But it's like, no, it turns out Jillian was actually the target. I'm, I mean, I guess, like, with everything maybe she does for Themyscira or whatever, she, maybe she rubs people the wrong way, like, just her work in general. Like, what it is that put a target on her back, I mean, I guess it could be a multitude of things. But she was the actual target, and, you know, Garth's, Stuck, jumped in the way of the bullet. It's either like because it didn't because it seemed like he heard it coming and he got in the way because that's what I thought was aiming for Donna, but it turns out it was Jillian. But I think that was his way of protecting Jillian, or maybe it's just was it just bad timing? It, it seemed like it was purposeful, like he turned at the right time on purpose. Maybe, maybe not. Like the episode Aqualad made it seem like he turned on purpose, but we'll see. Um, it is kind of sad that in the end, Slate still ended up killing Jillian anyway, um, her and her people, you know. So that's another thing, no, more, even more people that Slate is taken from Donna, you know, so. But what was interesting is the moment Dick saw what, you know, Jericho was capable of, it's like, you know what, we're going to bring him into the fold, the fact is showing off everyone else what he could do, the fact of the matter is, you know, it's like he deserves to be amongst us, because he's not going to find a lot of people out there who are, you know, freaks, but he belongs here, and Don, Don, Don is like, oh, because we're freaks too, and it's like, well, yeah, and they bring up some interesting dialogue in the sense that, like, you know, Don had brought up the fact is that, Every time she wakes up, Dick isn't there. So it's like, okay, so like this is the beginning of the end of their relationship because he got consumed by revenge. And I think out of anyone, like they're all kind they all want revenge against Slade, but it's Donna and Dick who like are the most consumed by it, who are that much of an and I think, you know, Donna's situation understandable because it's so close, but I think you can make Dick's situation come from the fact is that, you know, having lost his parents, wanting revenge, plus also as he joked, well, he not jokingly, obviously, I think he meant it literally when he was like, yeah, I was kind of raised by a psychopath too. Like Bruce taught him where to kind of divert his energies and stuff like that. It's like, uh, he was kind of, he's kind of a monster of Bruce's making. And so like the need for revenge is something that kind of, you know, it burns deep and personal because he wanted revenge for what happened to his, you know, parents as well. So it's like, you know, it when it, it him and Bruce, I'm sure, have a tough spot when it comes to, you know, people that you care about getting killed. Like, that revenge, like, like itch you get, I think it runs deep in both of them. You know, just because of just, you know, everything that they kind of, like, I think it's just, it might just be a bat trait in general. In the sense of, like, maybe everyone in the bat family kind of suffers from that. Or maybe that's something specific to Bruce and Dick. But, you know, but nevertheless... 
I did think it was interesting that he tells Jericho, like he wants that he wants Jericho to be a part of the team, bring him into the fold and everything. And Don kind of brings up like, oh, like, so this is going to be you further using him. But it's like, no, like we need to bring him into the fold. But it's like you can tell that it isn't just about that. It is also about still using him in some shape or form. But it's like, hey, if we're going to bring him into the fold, we got to tell him everything. So they reveal their identities to him. Plus, also tell him who his dad really is, which he gets pissed. And it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm sure it hurt to find out they were lying to him. And the whole their whole friendship was based around the fact is of them trying to get revenge against his dad, against Slade. But then it's like the whole thing of like, well, now that I know everything that was about my dad, it's like, at least you guys told me the truth. My mom has continued to lie to me about this. And it's actually interesting because she actually meets with Slade later on because she wants to. I mean, I wonder does she know like she knows that he's with some group of friends and stuff like that. But it's like, oh, these Titans, uh, which I even love that later on Wintergreen. It's like, oh, the fact of the matter is they name themselves Titans. The same same ones who got their asses kicked by Zeus. Why would you name yourself after a bunch of losers? I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing. I'm like, huh, I never even thought about that, you know, from like a Greek mythology standpoint. So I, thought that was, I just thought that was kind of fascinating. Uh, but nevertheless, along with, you know, his mom's explanation I thought was kind of interesting because for her it's like she wanted to keep Slade preserved. It's like oh, you're for uh, Jericho to think of his father as a hero, and she didn't want to tarnish that image. But it wasn't for the sake of like oh, keeping Slade good in his mind for like oh, because your son, oh, uh, you know, it's like no, I, he needed a good role model in his life so that he can grow up and become a good man himself. Like you know, the fact that matters all this praise and these falsehoods I created about you, you don't deserve them. You're a terrible person. But for her, she's willing to do whatever it takes if it means, you know, bringing her son back home. Even con it's it's interesting because you wouldn't think she'd be, but I guess it's like Jericho's safety is what comes first. But that's why I'm wondering, like, you know, it's like, did you know he was hanging out with a bunch of superheroes? But then maybe that, you know, that probably doesn't matter because it's like, you know, I don't know. It's just interesting that Slade has the audacity to get pissed. It's like, well, you did kill their friend, but he, like, his warped perception of just kind of like, oh, like, you guys think you're such great heroes, but the fact of the matter is you're not. Basically comparing them to him of saying, like, yeah, I might be a monster, but your guys are a monster of another breed, too. I love that he was literally telling that to Dick, literally after he had just killed Donna's friends and fatally wounded her, slicing her up. It's like, yeah, you have the audacity to say all that, but I guess for him, it's like, I am what I am. I accept who I am, but the fact of the matter is you guys still wear your mask. You try to pretend like you're heroes, pretend like you're the good guys when in actuality you're not, which is like, can you that's why I'm like you're a little screwed up in the head if you like I, I get it they're not you know it's I guess for him it's like oh you're playing pretend the fact of the matter is you're manipulated oh betrayal is so much it's like no nah, I think murder's still pretty damn bad he's like it's bad but not as bad as betrayal I was like no murder's pretty good yeah betrayal sucks but it's not as bad as murder. You've killed a lot of people. Once again, you killed one of their friends. At least they were upfront about that. I mean, granted, you can make the argument. It's like, well, they lied and stuff like that. Um, obviously, it makes you wonder if it wasn't for the Donna getting attacked, would Dick had fought would Dick have followed Jericho to meet with his dad or not? I think so anyway, because I'm sure he was already sitting at the computer, so he's probably tracking him. Because I'm sure when they hugged, he probably put a tracker on him in that moment. I almost halfway expected like, after the hug and after Jericho left, he'd pull out a gadget or something to get a, you know, make sure the tracker's working, but I guess not. But, um, it's just, it's like I understand, like it's a, it's a crazy circumstance, you know, and situation. I mean, I get it. It's a thing of like, it sucks that, you know, I mean, I get it. It sucks the whole being used and everything, but it's just like that is shitty on their part. But at least they I was actually surprised to find out they actually ever told Jericho that whole thing. But at the same time, it's just kind of like you can't blame Dick for being so pissed. It's like you already killed one of my friends. You already you were on pro and basically in the process of almost killing another one. You've killed a whole bunch of people. That's why I'm just so like it's so interesting. But I think it's also that thing of like no matter what the circumstances may be for Jericho, it's like you're still my dad regardless. It's that whole complicated thing of like, yeah, you do terrible things, but you're my dad. And in fact, it matters at least you're being honest to me going forward. But it still kind of sucks that one of your new friends, which that's, uh, you know, that's a slippery slope because they've been lying to you and everything. But at least they came honest and were true about it. But in fact, the matter is he was still in a process. He was in a process of hurting one of them, too. So it's like, I don't know, man. I just I just. 
it's just that thing of like, I can't blame the Titans fully in a sense because I feel like, yeah, they manipulated him, but they didn't do anything horribly wrong. The way Slade makes it seem, I mean, and I think that's the whole perspective of the whole situation of, yeah, it sucks. You manipulated these, uh, this kid, which you can also, I think that's something that it could be circled back around and be like, oh, you're manipulating Rose. You're manipulating um Jason, you're manipulating Rachel, you're manipulating Gar because obviously you're not telling them the truth. And the fact of the matter is what happened. Like, you know, uh, you know, he Jericho came to, you know, Titans Tower and all that kind of under false pretenses. Well, that's well, yeah, kind of under he hung out with them under false pretenses. And now it's almost like you're getting these heroes, these young kids to kind of step up to become heroes and stuff like that under false pretenses to a certain extent, too. So uh, it's, you can understand that whole situation. That's why I'm, I'm so curious to see what how Rose fits into this. Like I keep circling back to that because that's the one thing that kind of sticks out in my head. But um, also Slade is a pretty tough SOB. I mean, I knew he was tough, but damn, like Donna didn't land any like. Like, it seems super one-sided in every fight, whether it be present day or back then. Um, especially Dick. Dick was, like, he tossed him around and beat the crap out of him. Did the same thing to Donna, too. And at the very least, Donna has, like, some ver some superhuman strength because she's half, them, uh, you know, Themyscarian, uh, Themyscarian, while also being, like, half human. But still, you know, um... Uh, but to be fair, Slade is, you know, basically super soldier and he's got that rapid healing, which it almost seems like that doesn't even really come into play because he's so busy kicking someone's ass that it doesn't seem like he necessarily needs the rapid healing. But regardless. And then when the situation finally came down to, I was wondering, I was like, OK, so at which point is Jericho going to get hit? I thought it was going to be something maybe that Dick dodges or maybe like while he's running from the bullets or something, he got hit. But it's like. No, and I think this speaks volumes because, I mean, like when there was like that little like smoke grenade or whatever that was thrown, Dick ran over and tried to get to it before it exploded in front of him and Jericho. I mean, luckily they weren't hurt. It was just kind of both not bad. But when the time came, Jericho stepped in because he didn't want, you know, because no matter what the circumstances is, like Dick kind of took him under his wing and was kind of a friend to him. You know, they hit it off about music and stuff like that, even if it was under false pretenses. I think Jericho still didn't want, like, probably one of the few friends he has to die. So he steps in the way, which, to be fair, Dick had passed out. So I, I guess, like, his body was found afterwards. I wonder, did they give him a proper burial? I mean, did, it, did they have to take him back to his mom? Like, like, there's so much of that. We don't see the other side of that. Maybe we will in the future. But I thought that was so interesting, kind of learning all of that. And I... And I figured as much because I kept thinking like the way like, oh, because in his mind, he's like, I killed him because I kept pushing him in this situation. I kept using him even when the others were saying no. So the fact of the matter is that's why I believe Dick kind of takes it on personally. Like, no, I killed him, even though it was Slade. And that's why Slade's pissed because it's like, oh, you manipulated my son. Like if you hadn't got those stupid ideas in his head, who would have never gotten in a way? Like I lost my only son because of you type of thing. So... Which even I'm like, is that really the, you know, cause like I said, they just kind of kept that a little like, whoa. So maybe there's more to it. Maybe not. Maybe it just is what it is type of thing. I kind of feel like they might be holding a little bit back from us, but we'll see. Um, it is kind of, you know, it is a shame and it's just kind of sad to see that story end up that way. But like I said, I, I had the feeling like it wasn't going, I figured it was going to be a thing of like, because Jericho got caught in the middle and was ended up being killed by Slade. I knew that's pretty much, much why he's pissed too, because it's like, you basically put me in a position where I ended up killing my own son, so anyone would be pissed. But um, it's kind of sad at the end, it's like you see like the other Titans leaving. Obviously, Don and Hank are the most pissed. Now we kind of see why things officially, officially ended between uh, Don and Dick. Like I said, we saw the beginnings of it earlier, but even more so after this, you know. And I think Donna was the one that was the most like, no, nah, you can, um, if I'm going to be in New York, if you ever need a place to crash, I can. Because she understands, because she was, she was one of the two. Like I said, Hank and Don were the most against everything, but Donna was the one that was like all for revenge as well. So she doesn't blame Dick as much as the others do. Because I think for her, she was like, I was just as driven for revenge as you were, maybe even more so. So you know who am I to really kind of jump on you about it but I think because Don and Hank were the most like against it and so they kind of put yeah they're all the blame but I think they picked the biggest blame on Dick because they were like both like we need to back away from the situation but he didn't want to listen so and because of that Jericho ended up dying so 
a powerful episode in that regard, you know? So, like I said, we know the last time we saw he was telling the story to Jason, but our, when we get back present day, is he going to have told everyone? I mean, we know Rose isn't there anymore, so... Um, Either way, now that this is out in the open, potentially, I'm curious to see what the reactions are to this. So I'm very curious to see ultimately where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. And now moving on to this week's episode of Van Helsing. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, we finally understand this whole, you know, Violet and Jack situation. I kept wondering, I was like, okay, so how are you Van Helsing? I was trying to figure that out because I figured, like, Vanessa and Scarlet had to be the last of it. Now we find out that that doctor who was pretending to be uh, their mom uh, back in season two. Obviously, she popped up in season three as well for a little bit, but um, she took their eggs before they left, which is super fucked up. But um, basically, that's how Violet and Jack came to be. So, begs the question, which makes it like, oh, so that's how they're Van Helsing's. Because at first I was like, okay, the reason why they're able to heal the way they are, I was like, oh, it must be because they're both Vanessa. Because I'm about to say, maybe it's going to be a thing of like, one's Vanessa, one's Scarlet, or maybe both are Vanessa's, or maybe both are Scarlet's. Um... I, I personally would like to think one is Vanessa's and one is Scarlet, just because I think, it, I don't know, it'd be kind of, for one, it'd be almost like continuing Scarlet's line. Like, it's over the one Van, Van Helsing line, but at least that way, it feels like at least a part of Scarlet lived on in some shape or form. I think it'd also be beautiful in a way, especially for Axel to have someone to hold on to, like, hey, you're Scarlet's daughter. Oh, you know, I loved your mom type of, you know, type of thing, you know? Of like, oh, I'm going to treat you like my own family because I'm going to look after you because, you know, I mean, that depends on the grand scheme of things. If he ever meets up with Vanessa in the future and that regard, whatever, I'm getting to it far ahead of myself. But I was like, but uh, my under, my understanding was like, oh, because they can rapidly heal, it must be because of uh, them being part of Vanessa's bloodline. But it's like, no, it's because they were both infused with the Dark One's blood, like, you know before they were like before they were actually even you know born like the eggs were or i don't know how the whole insemin insemination process worked like whether they just added the blood to the eggs or was it after the eggs were fertilized it was probably after the eggs were fertilized that they were added regardless he did it to multiples because it's like okay it seems like violet and jack were both made like one was like their go-to and the other one was a backup in case you know which is just interesting because that kept kind of coming up about like Vanessa and Scarlet because it's like, oh, we need one. Oh, well, because it, it happened with Lily and Vanessa because it's like, oh, we need one Van Helsing so the other one could be killed type of thing. Once again, I'm going on a huge tangent, but that was such a, I was like, oh my God. I was like, that's so crazy. But also, it, I like it, be, like I said, being a beautiful thing of like, okay, so it kind of, you know, it doesn't replace Dylan or whatever, but at the very least, like, hey, Vanessa might have another kid out there, and even if it, even if they both ended up being Scarlet or whatever, it doesn't matter, because the fact is, she still has family, because she thinks she has no one left, because the last of her family literally died at the beginning of the season with Lily, so she thought she was kind of alone, but it's like, hey, you have some potential nieces and or kid and or kids out there, you know, so... That was just kind of an interesting development. That's all I'm kind of... Um, I just thought that was kind of fascinating. Then we also find out, like... I was wondering, like, why Hanson part of Black Tech and everything. Like, I get maybe you're experimenting and stuff like that. But I'm like, why are you kicking it with... Well, it's like, nope, he's kicking it because he's a part of this whole plan to bring out the Dark One. I'm wondering, is he, like, OG, like, Black Tech? Because the way... Because it turns out he's not who he says he is. Like, this whole Hanson thing is a disguise he's been wearing this for decades so he's probably been using black tech as a means to, maybe that was always black tech's main goal was to find a way to bring back the dark one or maybe only certain people within the organization were really privy to everything that black tech was really a part of who knows and so it seemed like i said because like the oracle and michaela know what he really looks like and it's like oh like don't you think it's time you showed your real face or whatever so it's like okay we see him later on um feeding on avery with everyone else which you kind of feel bad for avery because she seemed like she might be the only ally in this situation because she was going to investigate Hanson and everything that he's been up to because hence why I was saying like not all of Black Tech knew what he was up to he might be even if he's not at the top 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 of Black Tech which I would assume he is but even if he isn't he's probably hidden in the shadows for long but I kind of think he's probably at the well it seems like there's overseers too so it must be like he must be in charge of his own sections and people just kind of left him alone but regardless 
you kind of feel bad for um, Avery. But it, like we saw him feeding, so he is definitely a vampire, but he might be an older one, much like them. I'm wondering, is he going to be like... Well, could we, well, it seemed like the last of the ancients died with Dimitri, so it's like, maybe he's an ancient, or maybe he's even older, maybe he's on the same level. I mean, for Michaela and the Oracle to know him, it must mean that he's just as old as them, so he must go way, 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 way back, too. Part of me was almost wondering, too, like, is, are we going to end up finding out he's actually another bride? That the fact of the matter is, like, he's wearing this disguise, but that's not what he really looks like, that he's actually another bride, and it's, I, that's what I was wondering. Because I was wondering about the superhuman strength and stuff like that, too. I was like, were you taking the same serum that, like, fake uh, Abby was, as well as um, home dude who stopped aging? I was wondering if he had taken the same thing and did that give him superhuman strength? It's like, no, he's got superhuman strength because he's not human. So there's that side of things. And, you know, what's also interesting, though, is that he keeps... He is keeping a lot close to the vest. So I'm wondering he's not as invested in this as he was. Because it's like, why did you hide, you know, Violet's, you know, birth from us? I think it's because he didn't want them to find out. I think it's because he wanted to keep her. Because I think he grew attached to her. It's like, she was meant to be your little experiment, your little keepsake. But it's like, you grew attached to her. You do care for her so i wonder is that why he hit jack as well because it's like well vanessa if, if violet ends up dying or maybe he's hoping that vanessa will be the one that ends up being sacrificed and not violet or jack because he's hiding the fact is that jack exists even though he know he's like oh there were other failures not unless he's under the impression that she died well because she kept he kept telling her it's like oh your sister is dead so it's like not unless he's under the impression that she's dead too because she got lost in the, you know in the apocalypse you know the rising and everything, which, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Vanessa kind of got lost in the, you know, foster care system. They knew where Scarlet was, except, you know, that's around the time Scarlet's dad had burned down the place to kind of hide where they were, so they kind of lost track of her as well, so there's just so many damn moving parts going on here, and obviously, uh, Violet finding out the truth about her origins and stuff like that, plus seeing her, you know, this guy that was her foster dad and it, whatnot, which begs the question, she probably never actually, um, he must have given her a fake family, or maybe he raised her to believe like, oh, I'm your foster dad, I, oh, your parents were my friends, maybe it's like, that's what I'm curious about, like, how'd you get, well, not unless she was, well, because Jack is under the impression she lost her sister, which she was very, well, no, it wasn't even very young, because she lost her sister during the rising, so it's like, they must have given a family to kind of, like, like, that's what I'm kind of thinking, like, he had to be behind why her family died or something like that. Just to kind of orchestrate things to kind of lead her back to him and keep her, I don't know. Maybe I guess the rising was, like, the chance to be like, all right, that's happening. All right, so we're moving into final stages of everything. Need to get you prepared to be rising up to become a Van Helsing. Like I said, there are so many damn moving parts in this situation. It's very fascinating. So there's that side of things. Axel is getting loaded up on weapons. It's like, I was like, oh, wait, you're back there? I was like, I thought you were going to help. It's like, you are. You're just loading up first. Um, there's everything with a poor feel. Every time you turn around, I have to stop myself because I always, because I, I want to just always call him Flesh. I, flesh just comes more natural to me than Phil. Uh, just because I, I always refer to him as Flesh more than Phil. So I just, I have to pause every time I'm about to say his name. But Phil is getting the crap beat out of him because Max is a bit of a psycho and he's enjoying the fun and everything of like, oh, hurting you and he can do it over and over and over again. Um, but uh, it also sucks because Phil's trying to talk to Jennifer, but Jennifer's not willing to listen because it's like, you didn't want to be married to me. You didn't want to be a father. The fact of the matter is you were you you regretted the life that you had. That's why she's like, when you became a vampire, you came and killed our children because of that. And he'd even brought that up in season one that he had already been dreaming about killing his kids in a you know, very fucked up, what, a fucked up thing. But he was already dreaming about them, um, killing them before he became a vampire because uh, Tom Cavanaugh's character back in season one had revealed that because that was something he had told him in confidence. But I think it more so than anything, I think it, it stems from the fact is that, you know, it, you know, your dreams manifest in 
certain ways, you know, so it's not probably how he really felt, but it's a thing of like, oh, that was his, in his mind, that was his way of escaping his life that he wasn't living or enjoying, you know, so you kind of feel bad because that doesn't mean that's how he really felt. That's just kind of like, you know, and for him, he's like, I regret it because like, you know, I didn't appreciate what I had then and now that it's gone, that in fact, I took it away from myself, you know, it's just, you know. And he can't he can't take back the pain he's caused Jennifer. But the fact is, I think there is a part of her that probably is a little conflicting because she does care about him. Because seeing him get hurt like that isn't the easiest thing, especially because he's human again. But it's like it doesn't make sense. It's like he's like, well, some lady, a Van Helsing, help me. It's like I don't know what that is. It's like right, that's a whole. Ex have, you'd have to go into a whole other explanation about that. Did he reveal something that didn't click in my head? I kept wondering. Okay, so why are certain people healing and other people aren't? Well, apparently he's like, it's because I got bit by a daywalker, which I'm like, is that what causes that? Is that what causes that whole situation is being bitten by a daywalker that leads to the whole regeneration process? But then it clicks in my head. It's like, right. Axel's situation is different because the one that bit him was... Um, Scarlet. I was like, right, because I forgot she bit him at the end of season, near the end of season three, because she was trying to heal his eyes. I was like, right, right. Well, no, because she had a vi no. It was a daywalker. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. It's been there in front of my eyes the entire time. I was like, no, she didn't bite him. It was a daywalker. She got to bite him to regenerate him. It's like, right. So that is it. That's the missing piece I kept being like, where, why is everyone just suddenly getting rapid healing? It's like, oh, if you get bit by a daywalker, it mutates the mutation already inside of you and gives you like major healing abilities. Watch, I even love Hanson was like, oh, the fact of the matter is I found a way to um, increase our food supply. Humans that will never die will just keep draining them. All we have to do is basically give them this mutation where Sam was like, yeah, but it tastes like shit. It's like, oh, you didn't know that, did you? It's like, right. I, yeah, at first I was like, well, why would Hanson? No, he doesn't, you know, because he's probably never interviewed a vampire to be like, oh, what, you know, how do you feel tasting this mutated blood? Like, oh, it tastes like shit. Okay. No vampire's going to want to keep it down because the moment they take a bite, they're like, they throw it up because they're just, it, it has such a foul taste to it. So that kind of screws over that plan for having mass, you know, keeping humans alive, you know, forever to be your blood supply. So it doesn't work out in that, you know, vein. So. But getting past my ignorance and just finally getting an answer because I was too stupid to point and realize like, oh, that's what that is. Um, the fact of the matter is we uh, find out that uh, Jennifer has another son, which is like, that's got to be a complicated thing because it feels like, oh, my God, I have another kid out there. But at the same time, it's like, oh, but at the same time, it's like, Ugh. yeah, I killed the rest of my kids. And of course, you'd be reluctant to have me around your kid just because you wouldn't want history repeating itself. So, but for him, it's like, I just want Jolene to get my kid, get you and my kid out of here. I, you don't even have to be near me. I'll stay here, which Jolene's trying to get Jeremy's help because it's like Max is a psycho. The moment he gets a chance, he'll kill both of us. Which, jo Jolene is so good at being a liar, dude. She plays that role so well. She's so confident, and I love... And she's just like, nah. She's joking around with Max and stuff. I'm like, you are really good at this. And she's like, nah, as long as you keep me alive, Black Tech never... Ha Denver never has to find out about what's going on. You know, Black Tech never has to find out what's going on. You know, you can keep doing your thing. Um... Then, you know, showing how crazy Max is because he's high and the guy's not fixing the radio and he ends up shooting the guy and he's like, ooh, ooh, and kind of calming himself down. It's like, okay. And it's like, oh, I want you to both clean up the body. Jolene having to stay there with him. I'm like, oh, the entire episode I was on pins and needles. I was like, oh, please don't kill Jolene. Please don't kill Jolene. Please don't kill Jolene. At one point later on, he shoots. I was like, oh my God, I, w I almost thought you were going to kill Jolene the last second you got I don't think he did because I think legitimately in a twisted way, he does like Jolene because she is such a damn good liar. The fact that no matter, he's super impressed by her con job. And I think it, for him, it's like, I, you know, I, I can keep you around. You're very interesting. Luckily, Axel does show up in time. And I love it. It's like, oh, they're playing the role in everything. And so, he, you know, Axel's about to leave with her. He's like, oh, can I borrow for a couple hours? You know, it's the apocalypse. I haven't had, you know for a while so as they're walking away max is like wait something's not right wait you two know each other uh wait, what's this beeping and i love that axel's about to hit him across the head with a crowbar but like jolene that was a tire iron but uh, jolene ends up shooting him and i was like oh and i was just like well or you or you could end up doing that so 
So as they're escaping, the the bomb blows up, and it's like, all right. I was like, oh shit, the whole the whole squad's together. It's like, all right, let's get out of here. But it was a part of my brain, like, why did they focus on Max's body? Or is he about to wake up or something? Is he going rapidly? I'm like, nah. I was like, oh, I guess not. And then lo and behold, he shows up again. It's like, oh, you super are alive. I was like, okay. So what the hell is that? Also, love the fact is they're like, come on. He's like, you and you shot me in the fucking head. I mean. Sorry, he's like, sorry, kid. You shot, you shot me in the head. Sorry, sorry about that. I love that he's apologizing to the kid or for his language, but it's like, what the, what the fuck is that? How the hell are you alive? Are you like Hanson? Are you actually something else? And you're just pretending, like, enjoying like this whole like human thing, or is it from sniffing all that blue stuff for so long? Like, I love how we're just like we're leaving that at the tail end of the episode and not explaining that now. So he ends up taking Jennifer and her son. And it's Jennifer's like, see what you said you're going to do and find us. And so, like, Phil right there has his, you know, rescued his family. But now they've gotten taken away again. So, that's interesting. So, obviously, we got Axel and Phil. I, I like the, I like the team-ups we're getting. Because we got Phil and Jolene. And now we got Phil and Axel. Because they haven't had, like, a lot of time together. Because the last time they spent some time together was the whole, um... Well, the... It was um, actually season one. I feel like it's the last time they were together together. It was like in the hospital back in season one. I don't know if they've ever been around each other for a long period of time. Because, yeah, because even season two when everyone was meeting up, like, they didn't meet up again until, like, the tail end of season two slash season three. That's the last time. That's when they met up again. You know what I'm saying? So that kind of, you know. So I'm curious to see what they end up uh, it's gonna be interesting because obviously it's like feels like you know I'm not gonna stop till I rescue my family. And Axel's like I totally understand. It's like Axel's got his new mission to help him get his you know family back. So that's definitely gonna be interesting. Which now begs the question. Now that I'm thinking about it in retrospect, do you? Act, I'm well because you would think he would know if that was the case. Because I was about to say like not unless Max's situation is he was a vampire he got cured by Vanessa and then at some point got bit by a daywalker. And then that led to his situation for him to be able to rapidly heal the way he does. You know, that's what I'm thinking. Because, I mean, we know Phil can survive a headshot. Cause he survived one. So, I was wondering about that. I don't know. We'll see. And Jolene's kicking it with Jeremy. And Jeremy's like, yeah, I'm, I'm staying with you, badass. So, it's like she's going to try and track down Sarah. Which, we know Sarah, you know, isn't in Denver. She's wherever, you know, Hanson and them are. So, there's that. There's the whole situation of... Violet leaving and Sam following her because for him it's a whole thing of like he's you know he's twisted about his you know cat and mouse game so he wants to go after Vanessa which Violet's going to lead him directly to Vanessa because they're all going to collide and I'm sure that's all that collision is also going to include uh, Julius like I, I brought up last episode so like I said there is a lot going on i'm so excited to see some more things kind of go because it is the thing of like sam could have brought her back at any moment but he didn't because you know like either because it's just well because i think in a twisted way he needs a new well vanessa's his cat and mouse but i think you know in some twisted way do you think he's trying to replace muhammad again well he killed a love in his heart so there's only darkness but even he, i don't know it's definitely going to be interesting to see where this all takes this next episode because you know eventually they're going to meet up but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good night.